Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Thursday's edition of the Chris Pritchard Cycling New Show. Lots coming up today. <laughs> Stories that the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show was made for. But first, obviously, you can see that we're going to have a transition. Right, make sure you subscribe. We've got a new little subscription animation down at the bottom there. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button. Hit that notification button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you know when we go live with our live streams or our new videos or whatever it might be. See this here? This came yesterday. I'm not doing a full unboxing and showing you everything, but I thought I'd open it up on the screen just to see what we've got. No idea what's in it. And I genuinely don't. I'm not one of those people that go, oh, I have no idea what's in this. But knowing full well that the company's been in touch with a person and, and they've said, oh, we're sending you this. Now they've told the boys in the office what's in here, but I, I didn't read that email, so. Muck off, ride or die. Is it a t-shirt? Oh, sweet, t-shirt. We'll do a giveaway with that. Bike cleaner. I mean, I've just bought five litres of that, so cheers for that bike, uh, muck off. Appreciate that. High performance waterless wash. Bosh. Hello. It's an art to buy a toolbox now. And there's the invoice. 280 quid. I'm joking. It's free, isn't it? Ultimate bike care kit. Again, I'm not going through it, but I just want to... We get, oh, I love them, them sponges that, that are tiny. I, I, do you know what? I need one of these. It's perfect timing this because I need one of these. Right, we're going to, uh, we're going to get another one of these and we're going to give it away. Muckoff probably don't know that yet, but come on, Muckoff. Can we, can we give one of these away? All right, Daryl, Vincenzo, hello. Um, what's going to happen now is um, the presenter is going to ask you one question and the question will be, what is your name? You simply respond with your name. And then the next question, even though you don't understand it, simply say the stage in which you won. Have you got that? Brilliant. Perfect. All right, and sticking with Twitter, let me do something nice for charity because, oh my God, we'll get to the comments later. But this guy here hates charity. God, ooh, charity. How dare they trying to raise money for good causes. Ugh. But this one is Alex Dowsett's Little Bleeders charity. Alex Dowsett, if you don't know, is a haemophiliac. That means this is not scientific. When you cut yourself, uh, his blood doesn't have the blood clotting agencies that it needs to, um, to heal up a wound. So potentially a small nick, small graze could actually be life-threatening to someone with haemophilia. Friday evening, look, mum, no hands on Old Street, London, 6 p.m. I'll be on hand to chat all things cycling, Tour de France, Little Bleeders, Katusha cycling, and more. Come along. There'll be drinks is also. Slightly embarrassed smiley emoji. So make sure you go and support that if you're down in London. Feel free to, to pop in there and, and go and chat with the man who got through the Tour de France. He bloody got through the Tour de France. All right, sticking with Alex Dowsett is obviously a a phenomenal time trial that we're going to segue across to another story that it's just bizarre. Let me ask you a question. Would you think it's fair to every other time trialist taking part in a national time trial championships if Alex Dowsett was to organise the time trial route? And the next question, would it be fair to run that time trial at the national championships for the foreseeable future? I can't see that being fair. Well, that's exactly what's happened over in Sweden with Tobias Lugfidsson. He's organized alongside the Swedish national governing body, um, a time trial route, which he trains on daily. Not only that, it's 12 kilometers away from his house. So for the foreseeable future, the next coming years, the national time trial will be on the same course designed by a time trial specialist in his backyard. That's like saying to Egan Bernal, right, Egan, do you want to design this Tour de France route this year? You do, okay. 20, 21 mountain stages, okay, yeah. You're gonna go up what? Von two, five times in one day, yeah, oh, that's fine. No problem. What? All right, I'm thinking about changing the name of this channel already. How does this sound? The Matt Stevens Appreciation Society Fan Club Cycling Club Cycling News Show. Um, once again, Matt Stevens is making his appearance in the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show because he's um, him and Sigma Sport have just dropped this video, uh, which we found on Matt's Instagram. So over on Sigma Sport's YouTube channel, they are doing a live Grand Tour quiz. Go over there, make sure you're probably already subscribed, but if you're not, go and subscribe, get involved in the action. It sounds like there's prizes to be won, a whole lot of fun. Just pick 
a block. An elimination race has been organised by Jam Cycling down in Hillingdon at the Hillingdon Circle Cycle Circuit. What? Hillingdon Cycling Circuit. And there's a top prize of £1,000 to the winner. And let's open this debate. Let's, let's open it. Because compared to the Tour de France, this is small fry. It's tiny. There's not much to it, yeah? But it's a great incentive for an amateur to be able to win some money at races. But as amateur racers, like myself and, and a lot of you out there, do you race an event wanting prize money would an event draw you in more if it had prize money or would you sooner have a cheaper event so instead of it costing 25 pound to enter it costs five pound to enter but no prize money anyway links down in the description if you want to be part of that event if you want to enter that event both men's and women's races link in the description go and join up with bc and get racing and then before we get on to the main stories of today, one last story about NorCal Cycling. Yesterday we covered um, a story about Jeff setting up a GoFundMe page for one of his friends who suffered a crash during a crit. Jeff put a video up on NorCal Cycling and this is the crash. All right guys, this is a crash at the San Rafael Twilight Criterium and right there in the middle of your screen is our frenemy Brian going down really hard. Check it out, he was in good position. This is the final corner and boom. Totally unavoidable. So um, he really needs our help. He's in the hospital. He's in the ICU. He had a pretty severe concussion, and uh, he has partial paralysis of his right arm. It's pretty scary stuff. So uh, like I said, he really needs our support right now. I'm leaving a link down below to a GoFundMe. So even if it's like five bucks, um, it would mean a lot if you could uh, support Brian's recovery and um, leave a donation in the link below. Thanks, guys. Any small amount is going to help Brian on his road to recovery. As of yesterday, Jeff had raised around £4,500 and the goal was 7500 The goal's now been increased because people are just feeling so goddamn generous and that's amazing. $13,000 have been raised now. 282 generous people have donated. So again, by all means, go and do it. Although, according to some people, this one here, this guy hates charity. Ugh, charity. Unfortunate people getting money. Oh, and I forgot about this. 1st of August is the day when the transfer window opens in cycling for business. So we're going to be able to find out exactly where all the top contenders are going to be riding next year from this point on. So we'll be able to confirm all those speculations, all those rumours that we've been talking about. Um, Dumoulin going to Jumbo Visma, Quintana going to Arkea Semsic or what could be Katusha Semsic or whatever it's going to be. But we can start talking about it a little more officially now. So as soon as we get word on any signings, any movement, then we'll be the first to know. Hopefully, it's not going to be like Sky Sports because I really, I don't want a dildo in the face. Now let me give you a little bit of background on the Tom Cleverley situation. Let's remember that, of course, he played under Roberto Martinez at Wigan. And at the time... Let's move on to the first main story of today. An Imogen Cotter suffers a broken sternum. I couldn't think of anything worse than breaking my sternum. That's... For those of you who don't know, where the hell have you been? But Imogen Cotter, links down in the description to her Instagram. She's, she's huge on Instagram. Irish cyclist finished second, I believe, in the Irish National Champion Road Race Championships. Talented young lady when it comes to cycling. Not been cycling very long either. She broke a sternum at the etap. She headed out alongside our buddy Cameron Jeffers, alongside Skoda, to be able to go and do the etap. During the etap, she um, she suffered um, an, a, a crash that should should never have happened by the sounds of it. Somebody didn't mention that there was an obstruction in the middle of the road. Didn't tell Imogen that there was a debris in the road coming up. Imogen hit it over the handlebars, smashed her sternum on the floor, um, and, and still finished the ride. Um, and Imogen actually came and saw us after the ride and she said, I'm, I'm, I'm calling it out here because I can't believe this because she's she, this, this shows just how tough she is. She came in and she was like, oh, I think I've, I think I broke my sternum. I'm like, no way she's broke. If she's broke a sternum, she'd bloody know about it. I mean, it's a thick piece of bone. It's massive. I was like, there's no way. There's no way you can break that and, and, and carry on finishing the attack. I couldn't even finish one quarter of one of the climbs during the etap. So no, you've not broke your sternum. Turns out she was right and I was wrong. She took to Instagram to post this. Missing this racing feeling a bit. For those of you who don't know, I crashed during the etap de tour. I went to the doctor twice this week and it was really sore and was told I have a broken sternum. The real kicker is I was told two weeks ago 
that I was selected to ride as part of the Irish team at a race in France this week and I've had to let the opportunity go. It sucks as it was a huge goal of mine this year to wear the Irish jersey, but I have to believe I will have more chances. I'll be working hard with my coach, Jody Warrington, to build some more base in this downtime and get back racing soon. Imogen, from everyone at Cycling Hub, we, we hope you get better soon. I guess, similar to ribs, there's not a great deal you can do about a broken sternum. You, you, you just have to wait for it to heal, I, I presume, so. That's frustrating. Um, get well soon, Imogen, and hopefully we'll see you out on the bike real soon, and definitely, without a doubt, in an Irish jersey. And now it's the moment you've all been waiting for, the story to end all stories. Coming from the sun, the headline reads, Randy Cyclist has to be cut free after having sex with his bike and getting his todger trapped in the gears. I'll be honest, it was a little sore when they were cutting it off, but it's fine now, trust me, it's it's all still there, just most of it. It's cold. It's not me. It was some crazy Malaysian. A cyclist was rushed to hospital after getting his penis stuck in part of the bicycle's gears while having sex with it. What part of the gears? Like take a road bike for instance. We know nothing else about this story. Think about it. Where the hell are you gonna put it for it to feel good? Looking at this picture here, it looks, of, it looks like I don't know what part of a bike that bloody is. What is that? Firefighters rushed to the man's home in Kelantan, Malaysia, where they found the amorous cyclist in agony. He was rushed to the local hospital with his member still trapped in the gear mechanism. I mean, why didn't they just wait until... You know what I mean, don't you? Because then it'd probably just pop straight off. Wait until he wasn't in such an excited state. Pull it off. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. <coughs> Preliminary checks by the Chief Operating Officer, Mud Razin Mamat, along with five other firefighters, found the 34-year-old man had swollen genitals. What did they expect? If it wasn't swollen, he wouldn't be having sex with it, would he? Later, we took him... <laughs> later. Later, after we'd all got pictures of it, we took him to the hospital. We then checked the size and ordered the operations team to work with the hospital to open the gear cogs in the victim's genitalia using ring cutting equipment. So let me pass this question off to you. Have you ever, ever felt the need, I don't know, pop it in the bar end? Rub it on the seat? Use the saddle? All right, so leave your comments down below. I'm sure I'm opening myself for a can of worms to uh, to, uh, to stories that aren't necessarily true, but very, very funny by the sounds of it. Um, don't be crude, okay? Talking of comments, let's get into comments over the last few days because we've not had them for quite a while. So comments section coming up after this transition. All right, let's start with Dwight's comment. Just because the tour is over doesn't mean you have to bitch about esports for 10 minutes. Yeah, you're right, Dwight. I wasn't bitching about esports. I love esports. I spend a lot of time not only playing physical esports, like the majority of other esporters don't, but I also like to take part in um, Apex Legends and PUBG. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the very first win on my stream. I've shortened it up a little bit so you don't have to watch the whole two hours of the stream just to see this win. It's epic. It can, it's kind of epic. And Coulter is right. Of course she is. Prize money is determined by the market. 200 million people play Fortnite. They were able to market the hell out of that tournament, selling ad seats and so forth. It is what it is. Let's not pretend the pro cyclists are living in the poorhouse. I think I did. I, we're not carrying on with that discussion, but I know, I know, I understand that millions upon millions upon millions are being spent on Fortnite. All right, remember earlier I mentioned me hating charities? This is why. Superstrada. Dude, you're still bashing PG, Phil Garman. Hmm. I guess you don't admire his charity. Never said that. No kid hungry. Oh, what's that you say? Well, I was only bashing that he changed his mind about Zwift. I didn't mean to be uncaring. Hey, Chris, shall I donate to your charity? Hmm, the name escapes me, but it was something like Let Them Starve or Head in the Sand or There are no real problems out there, just poor wahooligans. Sometimes you can be an idiot. Right back at your Superstrada. Keep uploading, Chris. I haven't given up on you yet but your conscious viewers should think about watching PG's channel and donating to No Kid Hungry. Because I bashed him, just a tiny little bit of light-hearted banter 
Oh, Phil Gammon said he was never going to do it, but look, he's there, probably because he got paid, which he probably did, or Zwift donated to the charity. But where, where's that me bashing a charity? Where am I saying, hey, don't go and ride with him, don't go and donate? How do no, let these kids start. What? You're calling me an idiot? Think about it. Up until the point you said sometimes you can be an idiot, I actually thought that was just a little bit of light-hearted banter, a uh, bit of trolling. It's like, I get, I get that, it's fine, but you're actually being serious. You're actually being serious. Just because someone is, is supporting a charity doesn't mean they're exempt from a little bit of light-hearted fun. Does it? I'm bashing Phil in a light-hearted manner, simply stating that at some point in his life he said he was never going to use Zwift. And oh look, now he's using Zwift. That's it. Nothing to do with charity. Nothing to do with kids starving. Why don't you donate to it, Superstrada? What's your, what's your charity? What are you doing for charity? Hey? Before you answer that, I don't care what you do for charity because what anybody does for charity is, is it's their business. All right? If they want to show off and tell people how amazing they are for charity, then, then let them. If they organise a charity and they want to bring awareness to it, that's different. All right? JMTB, not going to lie, Pritch. When I was younger playing COD, and the internet went down. That was kind of suffering. Child line was on speed dial. Um, if the internet was down back in the day, how on earth were you using your phone line, modem boy? Rolling rat. I'm sick of seeing or hearing of Lance Hole. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Unsubscribed. He's got his two seconds of fame and boom, he missed out because he unsubscribed. Shola Mo Sure, have you ever heard of supply and demand? Look at, yes. Yes, I, un I understand it. Listen, I understand the supply and demand of the market and the market is the market, right? I get all that. And people are willing to pay stupid amounts of money to people who play, I get that. I understand the markets. I understand everything, marketing and money and prize money and, and sponsorship and I understand it all. I was merely making a small observation of two contrasting things. On one hand, you've got people suffering for the love of their sport and they're going to earn less money out of prize money than a kid just fingering some buttons on a joypad while a mouse on her keyboard. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Don't need to teach me the economics of sponsorship and marketing. It's fine. I've got it. I've not seen this one. Your genuity one. Armstrong is a cheater, son of a bitch. Respect Colombia. Egan Banal and cycling. Fuck your channel. Adrian Gutierrez Yander. Get a proper job plus lose weight. And that's it. Another episode in the bank. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit that like button. If you've not, feel free to hit that subscribe button. If you want to voice your opinions and tell me you're unsubscribing, then feel free to do that as well. If you are brand new to the channel, if you have subscribed in the last day or two, leave a comment down below. Just say, hey, I'm Chris. Hey, I'm Prince. You're all right. Love the show. You're amazing, okay? In the link down in the description below is also a link to our new Instagram. You might be able to see it somewhere down here. Um, go and follow it, check it out. We are launching on Monday. So if you wanna be part of the CPCN crew over on Instagram, go and give it a follow so you're ready for Monday. <clears throat> because I think we might be having a little bit of a giveaway. <clears throat> I just want to give back to you guys for, for supporting the channel while we're at the Tour de France. I've got some swag from, um, from what? Ah! I've got some swag from Wahoo that um, I'm not really going to use because I've already got multiples of it. So I thought about giving it away and I'd do that on the launch of the Instagram. Anyway, make sure you do that. Make sure you've done all that other stuff I told you to do. Back again tomorrow for another video. Until then.